Hey, uh, welcome to another episode of Kurt's Creatures. I'm Kurt, and this is going to be episode two. On this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to build your own reptile or snake enclosure. Um, I normally build ball python enclosures, which are a little bit smaller than this. This is going to be a double den enclosure for a boa constrictor, for a buddy of mine that's uh, asked me to build him a cage like I do for my own snakes. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and give you an example of how we build these, or how I build these cages. Now this isn't my original idea. I got this idea off of a lady's video on YouTube. She builds cages very similar to this. Um, actually almost identically. I do a little bit of different to my cages than she does on hers. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we do this. Now I've already done half of this cage so you don't have to watch me do the whole cage. So I've already put one door on. But I'm going to show you on the materials list, the things that you're going to need in order to build one of these cages is of course you're going to need the tub. And now uh, I get these tubs at Home Depot. These are the hefty tubs, um, hefty duty tubs. And this is a 48 gallon tub. Um, normally I get the 28 gallon tubs. I use those for my ball python enclosures. I'll show you one of those later at the end of the video. Um, you'll also need some hinges for the doors. Um, I got these at, I get everything at Home Depot. So it's just a one stop, grab everything. And I use these little two inch by one and three eighth inch hinges for the doors. Um, you'll need you some uh, cup hooks. And I, I've used black ones and then I got these brass plated ones. You can get a hundred count of these fairly inexpensive at Home Depot. So we got the hinges here, we got the hooks here. Um, you'll also need you a pack of zip ties, just standard um, zip ties, little eight inch zip ties. Um, box cutter here, um, pocket knife, uh, pencil, some scissors, throwing hooks, and pliers. Um, that's it. That's all the materials that you'll need in order to build one of these tubs. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do on this. I'm going to remove all of these items off of here. So, and I already took the time to do the hooks. So what I do on the hooks is I just take two pairs of pliers and I take the hook and I put one end of the hook in the pliers and then I take another pair of pliers and I just simply bend these down or back over a little bit so they come out looking like this here. And um, so and I already did that on these hooks to kind of save a little bit of time. The the doors, the acrylic, comes in a sheet like this at Home Depot. Um, what I do with this, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, I take and I fold up this little plastic a little bit. I take my hinges. And you want to make sure that you're, use, you're getting the side, the back side of the hinge. So that way it folds, flips down over like this. Of course, you're gonna put it so the door flips down. And then on this back side here, um, I use this super glue that I got from Home Depot. It's just some quick drying super glue that's waterproof. And take it and put a little bit of super glue on the back of the hinge. And then I just take and simply put the hinge down onto the acrylic and I just let it sit there for a minute let me get the other hinge do the same thing on it a little bit of super glue dots on the back of the hinge it doesn't take a lot of super glue just a little bit and then I'm just gonna slap this down onto the door here make sure it's down on the edge and then we're just gonna let that sit now I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna let it dry over here and while that's drying, and we'll go ahead and go ahead and get some rest it's now on this tub. So what I do is I take the acrylic and I set it on the front of the tub, and I and I draw an outline around the acrylic, so that way I know exactly what the size of the acrylic. Sometimes these are pre-cut sheets, and they say they're going to be cut to the exact same size, but I've kind of learned that they're not all the same exact size. So for each 
each door I measure that piece of acrylic onto the tub so that way I know I'm getting it cut for that piece of acrylic. And what I do is I just draw a line around the acrylic door as I set it on here. And then I, I draw another line about a half of an inch on the inside of that outline. So then I'm gonna cut on the inside of that. So that way there's a little space here for the door to sit on a lip of the tub. So it's not the door, the edge of the door is not going into the tub. So that way we have a little door, a lip. And I've already drawn that out on here. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our box cutter and then we're just gonna cut this out. Now, I'm gonna show you on one side how I cut this out, and then we're gonna go ahead and skip forward to after I've already cut it out. I'm gonna watch the whole process of me cutting out this whole little area right here, and that might be a minute. It takes about five minutes to cut it out. So I just, so I just scratch along the inside of that drawn line that I have here. So I'm just gonna scratch it in there like that, and then once you've got it scratched in, All right, now that we got that all cut out, we can go ahead and get to the door. So the next step is gonna be to apply the door, of course, to the tub. So let's check and see how our cut went. And everything looks great. So, perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pencil and I'm gonna mark out the holes for the acrylic. And I'm gonna mark out two holes. I'm gonna skip the hole in the middle of the hinge and I'll show you why in a minute. So, these little screws or hooks and things, screws, they expand inside the plastic, right? So if the plastic is to move or whatever, if the snake moves the, the tub, the pushes on the, the tub, it can make it expand and it can actually push the screws out of the tub. So instead of using screws to attach our doors to keep the snakes from being able to push the doors off, we use zip ties and they actually hold a lot better as you can see on here. You're not, they're not getting out of that, pulling as hard as I can. These zip ties hold these hinges super snug onto the tub. So you, your snake's not gonna be able to pull this out when it's sitting there like that. So we're gonna mark these on the first and the third hole, and we're gonna skip that middle hole. Then we're gonna get us some zip ties, because we're gonna zip tie this onto the door. Take pocket knife where you have your marks for your, your doors. I simply just take my pocket knife, I scrape out a little hole. Doesn't take much. Scrape out a little hole. And then we come on the inside and we're gonna just scrape it out on the inside. Take the zip ties. We're gonna take zip tie. We're gonna thread it through this hole here. We're gonna take our door. We'll thread it through our hinge. So the hinges are really kind of tight. We want it to be snug on there. So sometimes they're really snug. I have to use my pliers sometimes to pull them through the, the hinge, but I didn't have to use the pliers on that one. So I'm going to just thread it through this other side of the hinge, pull it tight, and then tie it down on the inside. We'll clip that off here in a second so that way there's not a long piece of plastic hanging on the inside. And then do the other hinge. 
thread it through, thread it through the other side. Make sure it's snug. Tie it down. Now, we'll take our scissors. Make sure there's no sharp. I don't want us, our snakes getting hurt. There's usually sharp pieces left after that initial cut. So I go back in and I clip off these sharp edges. We're pretty much almost done. Now we gotta just secure the door with the hooks around the side. And what I do is, on the hooks, we're gonna screw them into the tub, but we're also gonna, we don't want sharp things poking through the tub, so if our snake was to rub up against it and they can scratch, scratch themselves, scrape their, their scales or skin, and cut themselves up, we don't want that. We don't wanna hurt our animals. So, what, we, what I'm gonna do is, take and cut the heads off of these zip ties. These little square heads like this. And I'm gonna cut off five of these. And we're gonna use those to put on the backs of these screws so that way there's not sharp screws poking through the tub. There's a little plastic piece that's screwed on as like a, a washer or a nut or whatever on the back of it. So that way our snakes don't get hurt. It's going to also help secure these hooks so they make them nice and tight. So they don't come loose and back off of there. Snakes can't push the door open and sneak out on us because we all know sometimes we have escape artists that like to escape their cages no matter what we do. Um, Fortunately, knock on some wood. Uh, only wood I have around here is my knife, but um, I haven't had any snakes escape yet. Um, so my tanks are obviously doing what they're meant to do and to keep my snakes safe. And yeah. Sometimes these hooks can be a little pain to start. So what I do is I take a fresh non-bent hook and I just use that to screw in to give me a guideline for my other screws. Top ones are gonna start the hole off to make it easier. And we're on the screw number five. So I do one on each side three at the top to make a total of five latches for the door. Just make sure it's nice and secure. All right, just like that, we've attached our door to our cage. So now this is, of course, a double door cage for my friend for his boa constrictor. So we'll see how well he uh, enjoys his new enclosure. Let's go ahead and take this plastic off this door. This acrylic comes with plastic on both sides. Nice, fresh, clean look. I mean, these things are dirty, so they have to 
worry about anything. And you can stack them up. So if you have multiple cages, then you can stack them up and it saves space, saves a lot of money, saves time. Um, the snakes love it because the thing about these tubs is they hold humidity very well. They hold in the heat very well. And that's another thing, while I'm speaking about heat, a lot of comments in the, uh, on my posts about these tubs is asking how I do heat on these tubs. So I'm gonna show you how I do the heat on my tubs. Um, I'm gonna take you into my snake room. I'm gonna show you my tubs and I'll show you how they are active with snakes in them and everything like that. What I do is on the bottom of the tub, on whichever side I want the hot side to be on, I take a Zilla or a Zoomed or whatever heat mat and I tape the heat mat onto the bottom of the tub with HVAC aluminum tape. That's heat, uh, that whole, you know, won't burn tape or anything like that. And I tape that onto the bottom of this tub. This plastic is really thick. This is like super thick plastic, right? And plus it's got these little ridges on the bottom that has gaps on it and stuff. So the heat mat doesn't get this tub extremely hot to where it's gonna melt the tub or burn or anything like that. Plus if you've got an inch of substrate in the bottom of this tub, the substrate plus the heat mat, your snakes are not gonna burn themselves at all. My snakes actually like to move the substrate over and lay directly onto the plastic where the heat mat's at sometimes. And really it depends on what your ambient temperatures, temperatures are in your snake room. My ambient temp temperatures in my snake room are about 83, 82 to 83 degrees because I keep a space heater in there to keep the room hot. So they're normally on the cool side of their tanks anyways, but whenever they do want to go to the warm side of their tank, they like to move their substrate over a little bit and lay directly onto the tub. Some of them, and that's usually my bigger ones. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, that's the tub, the do-it-yourself tub build for your boa constrictors and ball pythons or whatever other humidity type based reptiles you may have. Um, again, my name is Kurt at Kurt's Creatures. If you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to the channel. Um, we do have a Patreon set up now, so if you feel like donating some money to the channel um, to help pay for um, supplies or new animals or any of the ventures or projects that we have going, I mean, I'm not asking you to, but it would be greatly appreciated. If you did join the Patreon, there's different levels, tier levels that you can subscribe to on the Patreon. We have our Teespring stuff that will probably be down below in, in the link in the description below. Um, you can get our merchandise there on Teespring. Uh, your T-shirts, uh, hats, all that good stuff, goodies, um, is going to be on the Teespring. Um, again, um, let's go ahead and take a trip into the snake room and we'll show you how I have all of my stuff set up active, alright? Alright, here we are inside the snake room and um, I have my tub set up along this wall over here. So you'll see um, I have my Breed and feed is what I call them. I breed and feed tags on the tub, which is pretty much a piece of paper I write down the last time they've eaten. If they are breeding, I'll write on there. Like what's the, one of my breeding females over here. On here, I'll have it each time that she locks with the male, what male she's breeding with. Um, all the, those dates on here as well. Um, what the um, actual pairing is of the two snakes that I'm breeding. Um, and you can actually take a closer look and you can see that there's moisture all over this glass here. Um, that's how humid these things actually run. They, they're they very humid inside these tanks. Um, and we can pop the top off of this tank and I'll show you um, in here. So, this is a full grown female, breeding female here. So as you can see, she fits very nicely into the tub. With the tubs being black, they use the whole tub as pretty much a hide. Now sometimes I do put a hide in with them. If, if they like it, this female, she doesn't seem to even like the hide. So she just stays on there. That's the cool side of the tank. Now I do have the heat mat on the other side of the tank where the water bowl is at. And the only reason why the water bowl is over there is because she pushed it off of the cool side because right now she's trying to cool off. She's obviously ovulating, probably. Um, she's been locking up very nicely with the male. Um, 
Down here another breeding female. Banana ball pythons, and I use this little tub for him. He seems to like it very nicely. He sheds all in one piece. Um, it stays nice and humid. It's warm in here. So, and he doesn't even go to his hide. He's got a hide over here. He, he never goes over in there. He just likes to hang out over here with my water. Um, on this side, I have glass enclosures. So I came from glass enclosures. I used to use the glass enclosures because I thought that was the way to go. That's what they sell at the stores, right? I mean, why wouldn't you use glass? I mean, there's a lot of toss-ups between glass and tubs and which one's better and tubs are bad and glass is bad. I mean, really, it's your snakes and do with them as you please. I mean, I, I, I can keep my humidities up and things that I need in my tubs. I did it as an experiment. I actually like them a little bit better than the glass. It saves me a lot of money from spending a lot of money on the glass. And when you do get the glass, I had to black out my glass with plastic because most reptiles, they don't like to be seen. They want to be hidden. Um, like my Nile monitor lizard here, you can't even see him, he's buried under his substrate, he doesn't even want to be seen, so usually you have to black out the sides and the backs and stuff of your tanks anyways. With these screen tops, I found that it was almost impossible to keep humidity here in Texas, in North Texas and Lubbock where I'm at, because it's so dry, there's no humidity here, so I had to block off these screen tops with plastic as well to lock in the humidity in these glass cages. So then it just got to be, too, it was like too much work and you're spending way too much money on the glass cages. So my, for my personal use, that's why I went to use a tub. Now I still keep my Brazilian rainbow boa in this tall enclosure here. I like this enclosure. Um, it's a glass enclosure, but I'm able to keep up the humidity with the plastic, with the top being plastic off. So that way it doesn't let all the humidity escape out. Um, you can still see moisture on the leaves and stuff like that in there with it like that. So, um, but everything else, as you see, I keep pretty much every all the rest of my animals in tubs. So it's been a pleasure showing you how I do things. But one thing, let me show you this heat mat real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just lift this up real quick and maybe we can get a shot at the bottom underneath to show you how I have them connected. So let's. So on the bottom of the tub, you can kind of see how I have a heat mat taped onto the bottom of the tub. And again, uh, thanks for coming out to Kirk's Creatures. Remember, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ding that bell so you can get notifications whenever I drop another video. If you want to go to the Patreon, visit us at Patreon Kirk's Creatures. We're on Instagram, Kirk's Creatures on Instagram. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, Kurt's Creatures on Facebook, and of course right here on YouTube where you always catch me in my latest videos. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.